take one more. It's good about Korean. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. I, <laughs> I appreciate you calling. I have thoughts, but I want to keep my thoughts. So. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I, no, no. I, I, I pre you are correct. It's been a while, so go ahead. Well, thank you. Um, I'd like to ask you about press freedom and then about a significant White House personnel matter. Um, about press freedom, our yeah. government appears to be closer to potentially extraditing Julian Assange. Um, Press freedom groups say that the case threatens to criminalize our profession. So I'm wondering what the White House's thinking is uh, regarding that matter and the potential for threat to press freedom. And does the White House have a stance on the pending federal press shield legislation to that passed the House and that Senator Schumer told me he hopes reaches President Biden's desk this year? You're talking about the Press Act more specifically. Yes. Look, and I said this, I've said this many times, I said this last week, where journalism is not a crime. We've been very clear about that. Uh, and uh, as it relates to this particular legislation, uh, I haven't reviewed it. Would have to talk to our, our Office of Ledge Affairs on that particular legislation. But I do want to say, back in October of 2022, the Justice Department codified a policy to ban subpoenas of journalist uh, records. Uh, the president strongly supports the right of free and independent press. That is something that the president <coughs> talked about when he was at the gridiron. Uh, the president talked about this at the last White House uh, correspondence. Respondents dinner. He's been very consistent uh, about this. And I'll just quote him for a second. A free press is a pillar of any free society. And while we may not always agree with certain coverage or admire it, we do admire the courage of the free press. Journalism, again, is not a crime. Before moving on, just to confirm, no stance yet on the press act that you're aware of. And the Assange matter is they're concerned about that uh, you know, I, I don't have much more to share besides what I just laid out here, um, so I'll just leave it as uh, what I just stated to you. In prison and five years. I understand. I, I, hear, I, hear, I heard the question. I'm just not going to go beyond from what I just stated. And on the personal matter, I'd like to ask you about my reporting on Anthony Bernal, who is one of the most powerful figures in this White House. Uh, the First Lady reportedly refers to him as her work husband. Uh, three former colleagues have made allegations of sexual harassment against him building on prior reports of bullying. Uh, some of these sources have worked with you. I, I think you'd find them credible. Uh, but Chief of Staff Zients issued a statement dismissing the allegations as unfounded attacks without even investigating them, which uh, my sources say they're alarmed about because they say it could chill sexual harassment and bullying reports. Um, how can the White House potentially or possibly justify not investigate, investigate these allegations when the president says you'll So a couple things. I don't know who your sources are, so I, I can't, I, just with all due respect, I can't speak to that, right? I, I just don't. I mean, they're blind sources. I can't speak to that. Um, what I can speak to is you saw a statement from our, our chief of staff, Jeffrey Zients, saying they are unfounded. Uh, you saw a very strong statement from Anthony uh, himself. It was in your, obviously, in your reporting, uh, and he said the same. And uh, I cannot speak to personnel investigations here or anything like that. That is not something I will ever speak to. Uh, and I'm not saying there is one. I'm just saying that I will never, sp I cannot speak to that, and that's not something I can do. Uh, but hold on. Um, I have known Anthony for some time now. I've known him for more than a decade. I've worked closely with him, uh, and I consider him a friend, but also a colleague that I respect. And that's basically what you also heard uh, from uh, Jeffrey Zients. I just don't have anything else to share beyond your reporting. I, I, I'm I, just going to press you on this, though, no, because the president no, said he would fire people for disrespecting colleagues, and there's no investigation. I just, laid, I just said to you that they have said themselves, Jeffrey Zients and also Anthony Bernal, that they are unfounded. I can't speak to your sources. Those are your sources to speak to. I cannot. Does but no special status come from I, the first lady shielding Steve, him as some Steven, sources. I've, believe. I've answered the question. I've answered the question. Bernard, Anthony Bernal spoke for himself. You heard from our chief of staff, our chief of staff, and gave your uh, publication a statement, obviously. And you've heard from me. I, I'm. I don't have it. I don't. I don't have anything else to share. Say, I don't have anything else to share on that. Uh, with so we don't end in that way. <laughs> Go ahead, Brian. Uh, Rick, I, I guess I wanted to just clean up something that you have spoken to today. Would you care categorize the the conversation with Netanyahu that we've been told about all day long? Was it an ultimatum? Did we deliver an ultimatum? No, to him? Uh, I mean, look, was it a shot across wait, the bow? It was. It was a direct conversation. It was a honest conversation. 
Uh, it lasted 30 minutes, have you heard from my colleague? And we have said this many times before, you've heard this from us, you've heard this from the, the president himself. Uh, the prime minister and this president have known, them, known each other for decades, and because they have known each other for some time, uh, they have been able to have a direct and honest conversation. And so